Okay, trustees, I'll open the open workshop March 27, 2019. It is, it is 526. I'll take a roll call. Uh, Trustee Alonzo. Present. Trustee Casayas. Here. Trustee Cruden. Present. Trustee Finnerty is absent. Trustee Munoz. Here. Trustee Ryan. Here. Trustee Bellato. Here. Vice President Wilback is absent. President Brock. Here. Okay, at this time I'll turn the meeting over to Dr. Wonko. Thank you, Dr. Mado. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <clears throat> Planning for the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment began in September. The testing office works diligently to create an assessment calendar, upload students and demographic values into the assessment portal, and establishing testing sites to provide an optimum testing environment for our students. The New Jersey State Department of Education has instituted new guidelines for high school testing, which begins in April. Dr. Degnan will review our April plan, which kicks off the testing season, and will inform you of some recent accolades from the curriculum departments. Dr. Degnan. Thank you, Dr. Wonko, and good evening, trustees. The New Jersey Student Learning Assessment, English Language Arts, Mathematics, and Science will take place April 8th with students in grade three, four, and five testing in the discipline of ELA. Changes to the 2019 NJSLA include the length of the assessment and time changes, which will offer a more narrowed and condensed active testing period to provide a greater blueprint of evidence for our students, parents, directors, principals, and stakeholders. The testing season runs 12 months out of the year now with fall, spring, and summer administrations. And while students are not physically or actively sitting for the administration of each assessment, the testing department prepares the portal conducts closeout procedures for each testing session, conducts professional development for counselors, staff members, as well as providing support for other departments. Currently, the district is about to launch the spring administration of the NJSLA. Included in the preliminary testing functions, the testing department must ensure that the school staff members involved in the assessment are registered through the portal system. Therefore, matrix roles are updated on a daily basis due to changes in student counts and enrollment. The testing department must also conduct security training and test administrator and proctor training. The New Jersey Student Learning Assessment is primarily a computer-based assessment and most students will sit for the administration via the computer portal. However, if students are unable to use the computer for various reasons, a paper-based assessment will be utilized. Clarification documents by the state of New Jersey indicate updates about the spring administration and therefore provide school districts with advisement on how to proceed with the assessment pro protocols. And this is important now. Bearing the most recent update regarding the state assessment administration from the NJDOE, the Bayonne Public Schools will not require Bayonne High School to administer the end of course statewide assessments in English language arts and math to students in grade 11. So that's, that's a major change. Um, it's by, it used to be by enrollment in course, now grade, grade level trumps the course, so something to be aware. Um, the advantage of that also is where we used to have 18 days of testing in a high school, we were meet today, we we're gonna get it down to eight days of testing, which is, this is very good news. Um, so we will be manually conducting audits and assigning and reassigning students from the assessment through a registration delete and port over the next two weeks, and unfortunately they told us this like last week, so now what we have to do is go in and manually remove all our grade 11 students. So we are committed to working in partnership with educators and families to build a coherent system of aligned standards and assessments, and we will strive to ensure an optimal testing environment for students because the short and long-term effects of a positive output of the test administration are multidimensional, not only ensuring accountability, but relating to student placements in college, career, and beyond. And just with that, I just want to give a couple uh, quick updates. Um, we had the Samsung. We uh, won that $20,000. We'll be applying that to the um, computer lab. We also had a student place first place in Atlantic City, and he will be going to San Antonio, Texas to compete in a leadership conference. Um, our Latin team continues to receive recognition at the Sertaman. 
Uh, the big news is we had a gold medal winner at the STEM Showcase, Amy Waba. Her sister was valedictorian, I believe, two years ago, and she'll be going to Phoenix, Arizona. And finally, we continue our winning tradition with the, uh, the National History Day. 26 entries will be advancing to the state finals in May. Yeah. So a lot of good news from the yeah, big curriculum good. department. Good job. Okay. Any questions about it? No. Good Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Degnan. Yesterday, right here at our campus, it was clear to see that our district continues to strive to meet the goal of preparing all students to be college and career ready. For the third straight year, the Bayonne Board of Education hosted our career fair and job expo at the Bayonne High School Physical Education Community Education Center and provided a wonderful opportunity for our high school <coughs> students recent graduates, and community members to network and explore job careers opportunities. Mr. Copez will give you a brief summary of the event. Mr. Copez. Thank you, Dr. Wonko. Uh, we were very pleased to partner with the Hudson County One Stop Career Center and the City of Bayonne to host our third annual career fair and job expo last night at 6 p.m. in the Rich Corby Ice Rink. Approximately 200 of our current and former students and community members had the opportunity to meet with over 50 vendors who participated in the event. Just to name a few of the vendors who joined us, uh, Academy Bus, uh, Bayonne Community Bank, CarePoint, RWJ, Barnabas, FedEx, Hudson Pool Management, McCabe's, New York Life, the Pennsylvania State Police, of course our own police department, Bayonne's Finest, Source for Teachers, and the Bayonne Board of Education, plus many more. Overall, another successful event. The feedback from the employers was very positive and we thank our food services department for providing the refreshments. And of course, I would like to thank all of our board members who attended the job fair last night and for supporting this wonderful community event. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Good job. Thank you, Mr. Copez. The business office has submitted the preliminary budget to the county school business administrator for approval. I am confident that it will be approved. Lentil and masonry work at Bayonne High School will begin during the spring break, while preparation work will take place a few days prior to the break. That will include the uh, placing of scaffolding on that side of the building. Uh, nothing will interfere with our uh, student activities during that time. Mr. Fugu will elaborate on both items. Mr. Fugu. Thank you, Dr. Wonko, and good evening, everybody. Uh, I would first like to thank the business office for their work in a short period of time to turn around the budget uh, modifications to meet the recommendations of the board. Uh, Mr. John Gomez, county school business administrator, was on site last Wednesday and Friday to assist us in the submission process. The budget has been submitted to the county for review, and now we are just waiting for their results. Regarding buildings and grounds, we'll have the project or project starting on or about April 15th, which is a Saturday regarding masonry and stone repair on the 30th Street side of Bayonne High School. Setup will begin on that Saturday 15th, a week before spring break. Uh, scaffolding and minor work, uh, scaffolding will be um, erected, minor work taking place after school hours for that week, uh, so there'll be no disruption to classes. A major part of the work will occur the week that school is closed for spring break, and then work will continue again when school reopens. Repairs will take place when students are in session the following week around the school schedule, again, so classes will not be disrupted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fugu. There is a national epidemic that's plaguing our roadways, and it demands our immediate attention. Distracted driving claims approximately 37,000 lives annually. It is occurring in our state, in our town, and even on your street. We have partnered with the City of Bayonne and the Catch You Later Foundation to produce an art show at the Bayonne Public Library on April 4th. As part of the show, our Bayonne High School film students have produced PSAs promoting safe driving and warning against the dangers of distracted and impaired driving. I, along with Dr. Degnan, Mr. Copez, and President Broderick, participated in the filming of this public service announcement on distracted driving. Additionally, this morning I spoke at the induction ceremony 
of three new royal heroes at Dr. Walter F. Robinson Community School. I believe uh, Trustee Casayas was there and Trustee Wilbeck as well. And uh, some people were amazed that I actually knew Dr. Robinson. But uh, uh, many of you probably don't know, he was the principal of Bayonne High School and then became the dean of the Bayonne Community College. Does anyone? He also, he also taught me CCD at St. Vincent's. Really? On Monday night when I was in high school, yes. I always wondered why you were such a lady. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, a free community college, which was right upstairs here, uh, that many people took advantage of. He was a terrific man, and uh, it was great that the uh, Board of Ed at that time, I think it was 1977 is when they named the school after him. Prior to that, it was number three, and prior to that, you'll remember, it was the high school. And I actually graduated from number three as well in 1961. Do the math. Do the math. <laughs> so, uh, we had a wonderful program, and the uh, community, the people who were honored were honored for their work in the community, and it's completely a student-driven program. They are the ones who nominate the honorees, they are the ones who put the program together, and they are the ones who actually act as the MCs and give out the awards. So it was a great, great morning. That concludes my report. So are there any questions? I'd like to make a comment about certainly trusting you. I'd like to make a comment about the BA's position. First off, I want to say uh, he's not here. <laughs> I want to say uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. Fogu and the entire. Um, finance team, you know, Laura Z and I'm there, they do a great job, um, uh, especially Mr. Fogu doing a job and as an interim BA, um, I think you've done just an amazing job um, and uh, you should be commended for it. But I just want to point out that he still is an interim BA. There is a recommendation by the superintendent that's on the, that has been made for a permanent BA. We still have not appointed a permanent BA. There's a lot of business before this board when it comes to finances. We still haven't done that. Um, Mr. Fugu, although he has done a great job, I know is probably anxious to get back to his technology position. So I think that we should bring this up before the board again to revisit Dr. Wanko's recommendation for BA because I think it's about time, you know, he's done a great job, but I think it's about time that uh, we return Mr. Fugu to his original place. All right. That being said, I applaud you and commend you for dealing what you've been doing and thank you for taking on this responsibility in a very, uh, in our time of need. So thank you, Mr. Perdue. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, well, I think we'd have to repost, I think, if we were going to do the business right. administrator. Also, I think that uh, you asked if you knew Robin, you know, they asked me if I knew the people that when other schools were named after. They thought I knew everybody. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> yes. But uh, we'll move on anyway. <laughs> Hearing no other questions or comments, I would like to turn me back to Dr. Maida. Thank you, Dr. Wonka. Uh, trustees, uh, the agenda with all the resolutions were sent home. Uh, I'll quickly go over the agenda on items that... Uh, came in after committee meetings. Uh, first, I'll start for approval of minutes um, and acceptance of communications. I would just, if there are any questions in regard to Mr. D'Angelo's letter and why it's a resignation and not a retirement, that's an issue for inside, and Mr. Clark will be here. There, there's a simple reason for it, and I'll, we'll have to deal with that inside. But we, uh, and the copy you have is not signed, but Mr. D'Angelo promised me when he came tonight, he's going to be giving me a signed copy. So on that, I just need two trustees that would like to move communications. Thank you, Carol. And who would like to second? I'll gladly second it. Okay, so moved by Trustee Cruden, seconded by Trustee Moonwood. <coughs> um, moving along to curriculum, uh, you have your agendas in front of you. I'll ask you to turn to A8. And uh, 
this is an agreement with Gar uh, Arlene Gardner with the New Jersey Center for Civic Education. Uh, it's for a consultant uh, for grade five social <laughs> study teachers on April 2nd, 2019. So that is new. A9 is um, for our grant, uh, Title IIA funds, uh, $2,500, $20 an hour, and we're naming two of our staff members um, to complete that program. They're going to uh, compile and assess data. And that completes the curriculum portion of the agenda. If anyone has any questions, if not, was that was, was moved was by Trustee Bellotto. I have a question about Sure, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think it's A2. Just the, um, what are the hours that they need for this, to take care of the, is that summer work? Is that what I'm trying to get this at? Is, this is because one of the um, caretakers resigned, so we still have to manage. So we have one person now, so we have to manage to the end of the year, so the June 30th. Okay. Now, what happens with June? We a lot of hands. We had a discussion in uh, the curriculum committee about this. Okay. Is there is there a biology the club? Set the <laughs> is there a biology club or there, there's a science league? The science league. Yeah, there is an OSA club that's related to the biology discovery center. Right. Would it not make sense to also get them involved to help assist in this endeavor? Trustee, they are. Uh, I just, I'm uh, yeah. sorry, I, I, can't, oh, okay. I can't turn around, man. Yeah, yeah they, they are. There is an OSA club that is sort of linked to the Biology Discovery Center, and they nice. are definitely involved. There is a handful of group of students that are involved with this. All right, well, all right if you need me to watch a couple of the animals over the summer, I'll be more than happy to do that. Yeah, well, yeah. Your wife will be throwing you out. Your wife will be throwing you out. Yes, yes. Animals. Not wrong. Do you want the snake or the poisonous snake? I would say both. So one, one will take care of the other. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to finance. Money rabbits and guinea pigs. Um, yeah. B1 is our money received. We've had that resolution. B2 uh, required reports. Your board secretary reports are in your packets. Um, and then the repair department reports were emailed to you from the superintendent's office. Yes. B3 is our final claims and accounts. B4, I'll give you a chance if anyone needs to just freshen up on it. This is approval, our monthly appropriation transfers. So this is as of today. That's why you're just getting it. We just closed out. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Mr. Mr. Bogu. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, oh, I'm not. <coughs> I, well, she's not here. So, uh, <laughs> I just want to ask about the E rate. This, is, I guess, for more for Laura Z. Every time I want to ask a question, I'm like, what's going on? Are you getting the message? Okay, so he's let, out, let he's him out. know. He's got to do technology. No, no. Oh, Eric, okay. So, I had asked uh, some time ago about the E rates um, for the for the towers, for the cell phones, yes. okay? We only have one or two, we have three buildings, if I'm not mistaken, to have cell phone towers. I had asked oh, the business office a while back to investigate the possibility of adding more poles, you know, um, towers to all of our schools to generate more revenue. And then also, I was kind of shocked to see the low rate that I think, if I'm not mistaken, is Sprint. It's Sprint or at and that they're paying us actually for the rent on these towers. I think that it was a it Verizon. I'm sorry, it was very low, um, and I had asked if we can have the E-rate consultant reevaluate that contract in the property to see if it wasn't due for a boost because you know I know what I pay my Verizon wireless bill every month, and I know <laughs> I know they're making some money, so I think they can probably shell out some more to the board of ed. Well. You have good timing because the, uh, we do have a uh, guy who's doing an evaluation of everything. And Tom does know more than I do about this, but I do know that he's in the process. I do know that the uh, consultant is in the process of going through our bills and he's going to try to reclaim some money that we are owed. Okay, great. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes. Sorry. Just watch it, Just watch it. Um, 
85 was done at committee. Am I wrong? Uh, B6 is a new emergency transportation route. Uh, it's a special ed student on the recommendation of child study team. B6. B7 is a transportation contract. Um, once again, a Bayonne resident student is in a resource home located in Hillside. This is for transportation services. And that's B7. B8, the New Jersey Association of School Business Officials holds their conference June 5th to 7th. And this is for us to send two staff members. I thought they represented. <laughs> B9, uh, B9 was the School Buildings and Grounds Association Conference, uh, March 10th to 13th, that Mr. Alonzo and Vice President Wilbeck attended for us. So that's the resolution for that. And then B10. Say it. Yeah. Go ahead. They didn't go. Right? I, I was... I was the only one in attendance. I believe Mr. Wolbeck did go. <coughs> then maybe I guess our schedules just didn't cross. Maybe he is on my yep. backup paperwork. Maybe you guys just yeah. did not. Maybe he was ducking you. I wasn't invited. But uh, <laughs> good reason. No, my backup paperwork reason. is for both <laughs> school school members. All right. Yourself I and uh, like three months. Vice President Wolbeck. Um. B10 you don't have yet. I need Mr. Clark, but once again, that's going to be an issue for inside. Okay. So that is our finance agenda for tonight. Uh, who would like to move? I'll move it. And who would like on the committee would like to second it? Right. Uh, trustee Alonzo and Trustee Ryan. Okay. Moving ahead to personnel. Most of the resolutions were done in committee. I'll just go over the ones that weren't. Uh, I'll ask Mr. Kopaz to help me with C5 is on Monday, the last bit intimidation and bullying report. Thank you, Dr. Meda. In accordance with the Bayonne Board of Education Policy 5512, during this reporting period, six incidents of harassment, intimidation, and bullying have been reported and investigated at the following schools. Two incidents at Woodrow Wilson and one incident at Bayonne High School have been investigated and confirmed. Strategies and resources have been provided to the victims to assist in the recovery process. Consequences and remedial measures were given to the offenders. All documentation is being retained by the anti-bullying coordinator. One incident at Harvest Mann, one incident at Washington Community School, and one incident at Bayonne High School. In these three cases, there was no confirmed evidence of the investigated acts of HIV. Strategies, resources, and remedial measures were implemented. All documentation is being retained by the school anti-bullying coordinators. That'll bring us to resolution C9, which came in at the committee. It's a field trip uh, for the Intel. Um, yes, so right now, as you can see on the resolution, there's a chaperone cost that's approximate, no cost to the student. Uh, we'll have final numbers on that, but that's pretty close to what, what the charges are going to be. And uh, that is to the Phoenix, Arizona uh, Intel. Good luck to our students on that. C9. The advisor is S. Stamos. I'm right there for the Arizona. She good or any questions? No, okay. Good. And I'm going to ask you to turn to C17. This is a need high school counselors to work the year-end closeout for graduating seniors, transfers, and added district preparation. 
Uh, you'll see a list of staff members, one two hundredth of their salary, eight days of summer work, and then you'll see an alternate on, well, you'll see down toward the bottom, there's one counselor for four days, and then there's an alternate. And that is C-17. C-18, Nicholas Oresco School, gifted and talented. Uh, this is for testing and interviews, and you'll see a list of the staff members and the particular days that they're assigned to. C-19 will be for inside, C-20 will be for inside, and C-21, which is the resolution that goes with the communication, and that is for inside. And like I said, when Mr. Clark gets here, I'll let him explain that. Uh, just some bookkeeping, and uh, I'll probably just go out of order. Uh, our search calendar for our superintendent search, as you all know, our next scheduled meeting is April 17th at 6 p.m. That's already been advertised. Uh, that is when the slate will be presented to the board. And then based on that meeting, uh, we have planned, we'll, we'll probably finalize the dates, but April 29th, May 1st, and May 2nd, will be initial interviews, semi-finalists. What was that, April 29th? April 29th. And May 1st. May 1st, second. May 2nd. And I'm not sure yet on if we're board. going to be using all Correct. three of those dates. Uh, I guess it depends on the paperwork uh, process that, that uh, the members of the committee and HWA uh, take care of on the 17th. Gary, uh, the, on the 17th, the slate is going to be uh, um, submitted. Is that the names of the... My understanding is on that day, they're going to explain to the board all candidates that have applied. And identify them. And, yes. All right, so we would be, that would primarily be enclosed then. True, okay. but we still, we have that we have advertised. advertised. We have that advertised right. as a special meeting. Okay. Um, so... After the slate's presented on April 17th, April 29th, May 1st, May 2nd, uh, we will hopefully not have to use all three of those days, but those are the days for the initial interviews. Then we have semi-finalist interviews on May 7th and 8th. And then it's projected for finalist interviews on May 22nd. May 22nd? May 22nd. Wow, that's far. That's far. We can't push that forward more? I will wait till the 17th, and you could ask that question well, yourself, I but I, I think there's a reason. Yeah, but if I'm looking, the reason, may I? Mm -hmm. The reason I think it's that far away, if you remember when we were looking at the packet, I think the HYA was going to have them put together an entire packet for us as far as long-term goals and planning and, and like a presentation yeah. so you have to give the candidate I think a certain amount of time to that's why I think it's spaced out so much if I'm not mistaken that block from what I remember oh the 22nd is the final interview yeah yeah that's why there's a gap between the 7th and 8th and the 22nd wouldn't that also be uh, more of an extensive background check time also okay. with the thing yeah yeah if, if you remember from the presentation that the company <laughs> gave they you, they the you weren't going to do background checks on a dozen people. Right. Until the end. But once you got it down to say three, yes. right. and, and I believe Trustee Munoz is correct mm -hmm. that there needs to be a little bit of a gap in between. Obviously, if we could shorten that, but I will leave that up to your discussions with the company on April 17th. As we said, we, we wound up picking up a week, so we're, right. we're a week you know, into the process that, uh, you know, there's a good chance that we could be done on time, depending mm -hmm. on the results of the committee. All right, so that's the search calendar. Uh, next up, and on the left, on the right of your packets, I'll go by Mr. Wilbex. Um, back in your board orientation reorg meeting, uh, I did board training packets 
And I just wanted to, I know it's a lot of material to get at once, but I just wanted to refresh your memories because I, some obviously some questions came up in process, process about the Board of Education. This is by school boards. It's a 12 month calendar. This is a good guide to follow. You know, it's not carved in stone, but it's a good guide to let you know what we're doing in a particular month. All right. The reason I bring that up is because there's a little misconception about the budget that I just wanted to clear up. Um, obviously, what we just did with the budget was to prepare a budget to submit to the county. And absolutely right, there needs to be a public portion of this process. But it wasn't February. And the reason I'm saying that is I, I, I gave these out last week and I made new copies just in case. But these are the Department of Ed budget calendars. So I won't ask anybody to raise their hand, but are we a type one or a type two district? You don't have to raise your hand or anything. Just think about them. If you think you know the answer, keep it to yourself. But we are a type two district. Mm -hmm. And we are a type two district with a November election. Mm -hmm. right? So basically what happens is after we submit our budget to the county, which needed to be done by February 20th, we will get that back. March 20th. I'm sorry, March 20th. We will get that back from the county. At that point, we're going to advertise a copy of the budget along with our, our budget meeting. Now it happens that we can use our existing monthly meeting of April 30th for our budget meeting. So as soon as we get that back, Eric and I will do an ad, we'll do the advertised budget, and that'll go out to everybody. And then at that meeting on the 30th, that's when the board will take comments from the public, pro or con, about your budget. And, and that has always been the process. What, for the elected board, that has always been the process. Four years ago, we were a type one district. We would follow that same timeline, except it would go to a board of school estimate, where the mayor was the chairman, they appointed two council people, and then it was two board members, and it was a group of five. But they would do the same process. We would advertise the budget, we would hold a budget meeting. Usually the Board of Estimate would have a budget meeting with the public, take all the information in, and schedule a second meeting to, to make a decision and pass the budget. Um, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that at all. You could decide the night of April 30th that you want the budget exactly where it is and, and pass it that night. Why is this, why are you, I mean, was there an issue that arose from our... I just think that, like I said, and I, and I know, and I hate, and he's not here, I'll say it to him, but uh, my years as board president, uh -huh. uh, I never liked talking to the press, and it got to the point where I would only answer the press in writing. Right. So when I see an article in the Jersey Journal, I always blame the paper for getting it wrong. But there was an impression by the Jersey Journal that this board in the middle of the night passed the budget. That's not the process. All we did was send it to the county. The county's right. going to review it, the county's going to send it back to us, then we advertise, then we have a public meeting. But that article about a week ago was a little, you know, it, it kind of gave an impression by the way he, Corey wrote it okay. that we did something wrong. Right. We didn't do anything wrong. We're okay. following the same guidelines we always Right, saw. that happened two years back. Yeah. We actually passed a 2.9%, and then the state came, the county came back and said, no, you got to take a 5.9. So, I mean, you know, we could send the 1.1 up to the county, and the county could come back and say, no, you got to take 1.8 or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, most times they're going to tell you to raise it, but they're not going to tell you to cut it. Right, no, yeah. absolutely. Well, that's what I mean. Uh, also, in your packets, uh, going back from that reorg meeting is understanding the report of the board secretary. I know sometimes this stuff, you forget how to read it. Mr. Brian DeLucia did a really good handout. I mean, I still refer back to it when I'm kind of stumped and 
Eric and Tom aren't here and I got to look at the budget. All right, so that's that. And then the last item is um, <laughs> Trustee Alonzo wrote a letter to the, uh, I guess to the Jersey Journal, which was on NJ.com. Based on that letter, President Broderick asked Mitch Pascal to comment and do some research. So I've included Trustee Alonzo's letter, and I've included I've included uh, Mitch's response. And uh, I think we just have to take some time, and I think we have to address this. Um, as I said last week, we've had five committee meetings for finance. We've had four board meetings. That's a total of nine meetings. Uh, I don't think it was fair to uh, Mr. Fogu or Eric or the rest of the law and the rest of the business department that we, uh, we have a, a getcha moment in the Jersey Journal or NJ.com without bringing it here first. And if there is a problem, if there is a question, let's, let's ask it, let's let our professionals answer it, and let's move on. But I was disappointed last week because it happened in the audience and it happened in the paper. That once again, we're revisiting $11 million that was lost, supposedly lost. We had a comment from the incoming president of the union about missing money. I thought we were past all this. And just as a reference item, I still have left them on our website. I've yet to take this stuff down. But, you know, you've got your OFAC report from 2015. You've got your state audit report from 2016. This stuff is still on our website. I leave it there for a reason. Because when there's a comment made of a financial issue, it, it just digs up that same, same thought that there's stuff going on. And I mean, you folks put way too much time in. I have way too much respect for our central office, especially our business department, to have to deal with this nonsense when we should be dealing with, with running this district and making sure that our students are well, well taken care of. So I will turn it over to the president. We can go through the letter. You'll, I'll let Mitch speak for himself on his comments. But I think we really should address this, get this out of the way, and then we can move on. Get the president, I turn it over to you. All right. Uh, all right. Going back to this letter, like I'm just going with the first line that you know, 12 million more, and and we know that 6.9 million isn't for us. It's for the preschool. It has nothing to do with our budget or that we can use. It's a brand new item. Can you please speak louder, please? Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was saying that. Starting with the $12 million that we received, I'm explaining that 6.9 of that million um, isn't money that we could use anyway. It, it has nothing to do with our budget. Uh, it, it's separate. It's, it's for the preschool program. We're happy to have it. It's going to be a great benefit to our students and our children uh, and our parents. Uh, but, but it's nothing we can even decide on how we'd like to use it. Uh, going to the rest of the money, the 5.4 that we received from that, just to clarify that very quickly, just 4.5 of that, like was said, is already used for increase in salaries, which we voted on, and benefits. So it, it's nothing we could, it's, we have no decision on that 4.5 million also. Uh, we also have a couple of other expenditures, you know, such as Special ed went up a million dollars. Uh, the books that we have to buy is another million. But just saying that, it's, I'm just trying to point out to that, if I, if I read the paper and saw $12 million, I'm going to say, I'm thinking to myself also, why are we doing anything here? But it, it, you got to have some explanations behind it. And that's, that's how I'll kick it off anyway, if anyone else has any comments. I have a comment. 
uh, directed to Trustee Alonzo. He mentioned slush funds. I'm not quite sure in my mind what you mean by slush, S-L-U-S-H, funds. That we, I'm not finished, as we as a board have perhaps used. I don't know if you want to use the word abused, but you said slush funds. What are you talking about? I was talking about the New Jersey Cash Management Fund, where we commingle all our money, and it doesn't get allocated, so therefore we have a slush fund. Our health insurance money, our food services money, our lunch money, everything is all in the one account. It's like taking your rent money, putting it with your gas and electric bill, and, and, having, and not having it separate. That's, that's what I meant by a slush fund. Because we, I mean, well, I do understand that I don't have an educational background, and I might not use the correct verbiage that certain people might hold me to a different standard. I, I understand that, but you know, I speak more of a financial background, and I, I don't come in here talking like I'm in a bar, and I use words that the regular person in Bayonne would understand. I don't think the average person in Bayonne, if I asked them what their liquidity is, I don't think they would understand that that means how much cash is in their pocket. So I was just trying to relate to the masses and not really the trustees, so I do, you know, I do want people to realize that it's for a general mass audience. That's who I write my letters for. Uh -huh. Well, first point taken. Um, I, I, I almost think it's demeaning that you say the, the average Bayonne person wouldn't understand the verbiage that you used. Secondly, slush fund, it seems like it's um, almost like a tack on individuals on this board. That's the way it's being interpreted by... Oh, no, the, it was created before we had an elected board. Well, This goes back to the appointed board. Excuse me, Mike, Michael, or Trustee Alonzo. That's not the way most people are interpreting it. And if there is a slush fund, <clears throat> that I, as an individual trustee, which is almost implying that each and every one of us is financially benefiting from it. And if there is a slush fund, please let me know about it, because I would really like to use it maybe for my family to attend my son's 20th reunion at the United States Naval Academy. Slush fund. I'm not understanding what you mean by slush fund. I felt like I was smacked in the face because the Bayonne public is perceiving it as each and every one of us is receiving a financial benefit from sitting on this board, which every member sitting here, Chris, Maria, Jody, me, Chuck, Carol, we receive no benefit. However, the way you wrote this letter, as well as Carol, I'm sorry, and Joe, um, you give me the idea that we individuals are getting a financial benefit from sitting on this board, which is far from the truth. Slush fund? What do you mean by slush fund? Money on a can board, not allocated properly. Um, when did that happen? When? When? I don't know. We would have to ask. Did it happen through the tenure of any one of us sitting on this board, from President Broderick to me to Mr. Munoz. The appointed board, I said. He already said well, the appointed board. We only have an interim BA. I would love to ask the old one questions, but I don't want to hear all, only. The old we one. Have, the old BA. We have. And I'm not going to grill the, the bookkeeper only, either. Because that's negative. What I'm talking about right now is the way 
your and letter yeah. has characterized this board. We don't have a slush fund, and if we did, trust me, I can think of really good ways to spend it. And it wouldn't be for a house down New Jersey Shore. I'm, I assure you, if we had a slush fund, it no, it didn't say that. But it gives the impression that we have cushion money. We don't have cushion money. And if we did have cushion money, Trustee Bilardo, trust me, it'd be, be used to buy books. We do. Yes. We do have cushion money. But Three the million way, over the reserves. The way we do, you Ava. have characterized this board. We're required to have that. No, we're required to have 3.2 million. We got 6.5. We got double the requirement. So what are we using it for? You tell me, Ava. It's Mr. Bernstein, didn't you have an education? Let Mr. Bernstein Can we correct, that number? Can we correct okay. that number, please? And that was what the auditor said as of June 30th. First of all, what was uh, point of the year? We're, fil we're filming. That's right, and we should Excuse film. Me. They should be done in public. Excuse me. Not in the back Excuse room. Excuse me. We're right. filming. We're on the record, but it doesn't help if five people are talking at the same time. One at a time. I believe the superintendent wants to address something. I just wanted to clarify that number, Mr. Fagu or Mr. Burns, would you? So the cash management fund. Being a district, a school district, we're very limited on any investments we can make. You need to speak closer to the mic. I'm sorry. So sorry. So as a school district, we're very limited on anything that we can invest money into. We're, we're <laughs> invested in a cash, the state cash management fund which, which is GUDPA certified, G-U-D-P-A. That stands for Governmental Unit Deposit Protection Act. So this money, this six point million, roughly, is used to pay our medical bills in the summertime because we don't get any state aid in the summertime. This helps us bridge that gap until we start getting it again in September, if that's the purpose. But you told us at the last meeting. And, and it's also on our board secretary in report. In July, we put the money back in. So we always have all this money in an investment account. Yeah, we use it for that. We could use it for so many more things. Six and a half million. We could pay way more than what he's using it for. But if we spend it, we don't, we can't pay our bills in the summer. So our budget, so... So it's not like all our summer bills are 6.5 million. Our, our, no. I just want our budget goes, so in the summer, when we do our budget, it, we don't cover the summer? So we don't get state aid in the summertime in July. Oh, sorry. You want to in July and August. I'm sorry. So our, our money from the state, does. I mean, just need clarification because yes. we are on record. Yeah. Our state money does not come July 1st. Right. July and August, we do not receive state aid. The state aid, our state aid starts in September. Correct. But we are back paid July and August. Correct. Correct. So that money, so the money we use in July and August is then put back into this fund that Trustee Alonzo is speaking about. Correct. So the, actually the money is, that amount of money that was in that CAFTA report is constantly, we take some out, but we put it back. So that amount of money is constantly in that account over, except those two months where we take money out to pay bills. Correct. And to refresh everybody's memory, only because so it's, it's happened in recent history, is there are times when the state does not send us those last payments. And we are informed by the state ahead of time to go out and get a loan, which we have done on more than one occasion at an April May meeting. Hopefully we don't have to do it this year. So you're always running on a So um, we, we've gone out and got a loan when that account was opened when? And with that amount of money in it since when? It goes back to Mr. Dolls. Dolls. So that's like 2002, 2001, around there, right? So we've borrowed money from. But remember, realize what I'm saying is the state has told all school districts, not just us, to go out and borrow even though they know we have a surplus because you have to keep a surplus as i always okay. say for when that boiler goes for so a rainy day that's the only surplus account we have is a six point that's 6.5 million that's we don't budget for um it's not part of the budget it's not part like, of the money you have isn't no 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 um like if there's 
this year's budget, when we reviewed it, there's nothing there for like uh, if something breaks that we budget something. I'm asking that. Just asking. I don't. It's there. So you're at, if something breaks, what do I get the money? Yeah. I start going through lines in the budget and, and start pull and pull out. And I. But we don't touch that six point that that account. That's not touched for those things. It's kind of earmarked for the summer medical benefits. From and state. Okay. As well as the state aid payment that is due to the Bayonne Board of Ed for the month of June, which is in excess of six million dollars. The state does not pay that to us until July. We still have to meet payrolls and claims right. in the month mm -hmm. of June. Exactly. So instead of going out and make, you know, taking a loan in lieu of aid for that mm -hmm. one month. That floats us for so that we month don't, as well. So we don't take a loan anymore. Right, we, we haven't use in the, fund, the month, a number of years. The, mo the money in that account in we a number of years. It. Okay. Because it's, it's not that like we take a loan like all the time. I just, no, that's why I want no. to clarify that it's clear. Maybe we do I, not take a loan because we have that money. Maybe I misspoke, but we only take a loan when the state tells not just our school district, but all school districts, district. 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 yeah. mm -hmm. to take the loan out because you're not getting your payment. Okay. And the state makes that offer every year, but also keep in mind that there is an application process that goes with that that has to go to the county superintendent's office, mm -hmm. and they need to determine whether or not you have money per se to make those payments, or they can justify you going out to take a take loan, loan for that. Very good. Okay, so we don't take a loan because we have that fund. Correct. We have it in a number of okay. years. If I, if I could just... Uh, so going back to Trustee Alonzo, so I, I'm just curious, do you think there's anything that's being underhanded done, or do you just think maybe you don't like the system we're using, is what I'm trying to say, because I, I, I think uh, if I'm speaking for uh, Trustee Finity, I, I, we just think sometimes it's, I, I don't know what you're thinking, but the words themselves, just like, uh, like a word like kickback sounds like we're doing something wrong here. Uh, now, you went out of your way to say it was prior to this group, but, you know, once again, people reading this don't know it's prior to this group. And even if it was, I don't know where our evidence of that happening prior to this group would be, but uh, I'm just saying if there's anything that else that we could answer it, this is probably the time to answer it, if there's anything else that you think of these statements that you think is incorrect or should be followed up on is, you know, we have everybody here right now, so this would be the perfect time. And Mr. Lonzo, if I could just jump in for one second, only because I served a long time with many trustees, and I have the same respect for this group as I've had with previous boards. And there is nobody from an appointed board here to defend themselves. I point out a second time that we have an OFAC report and we have the state auditor's report that we have continued to leave on our website which answered the allegations of missing money. And nowhere in either of these reports is there anything that says the appointed board did any of the things that were done in your letter. So I just point that up. I, I will make copies to the trustees, or you can just go online and get them yourself. I do think there's a uh, newspaper article online that uh, references our athletics director uh, overpaying for sports equipment and receiving kickbacks. I do believe it could be just my personal opinion, but many people still in Bayonne thinks there was something going on with the previous superintendent and her expense account, maybe because we gave her a car and we don't give Dr. Awanko a car. I, I don't know why a lot of people... And I'll, I'll turn to Mitch but. and Bob because I'm looking at them. We, we did not rice the gentleman that the trustee is talking about in the allegation of a newspaper article. So I don't even know if that should be outside well, at all. But I mean, you can't ask me a question. I'm not allowed to answer. Well, you could ask that question inside, but once again, we did I not didn't rice. Ask the question. I we, was, you're making I asked an, the question. You're making a statement on an employee that hasn't been riced. I'm trying to protect my board. Yeah. You can't, it's a current employee. I'm trying to protect I my board. Sure to, if it's a current employee, don't, don't go there. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Broderick, we have to rice him before I can answer your question. Uh, Mr. Bassett, I can't hear you. Board. Can you have a microphone? I, I, we have to rice him. 
before no, we, we I'm answer asking, the question. Mr. Pasquale. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, what I said was Trustee Alonzo was ra raising an issue as to a, a current employee. I wasn't sure who he was referring to when he first started speaking. You can't discuss that. The, the individual hasn't been raised. We did not discuss an individual. We discussed. No, you did. You did. You did. I didn't bring up a name. No, no, no you didn't. I did not bring up a name. No. no. I brought up the word slush. No, no, this has nothing to do with what you said. Okay. Yeah. I, I also, at the last budget meeting, asked the president for one more meeting to go over some of these line items, and he said, no, how many more meetings do you want to have? So then we passed the budget on Thursday. Then by Friday at 12 o'clock, the vice president had an appointment with the mayor, and it took him 97 minutes to get Dr. Mader to call me and say, we're having another budget meeting. So I, I just asked the president, how come the mayor can get another budget meeting, but not the finance chairman? Uh, I wasn't at that meeting, and the mayor didn't get another meeting. I, I as I said before. Because Dennis can't schedule the meetings, only you can. Correct. And I did that, and I gave reasons why I did that. I thought, uh, like I said before, it was a 5-4 vote. A lot of people weren't happy uh, with it. Uh, I spoke to other people, and I thought we were going to look at it again. In fact, it was an interesting, because the second vote, uh, it was like completely different, there were different opinions on both sides all of a sudden. So yeah, I don't think I was the only one that had a change of opinion on it. I was just questioning, so it's, it's just a coincidence that you called another meeting 97 minutes after the vice president met with the mayor? That's uh, just a coincidence? I guess we're talking that way. Okay. Well, the now, let me ask you, you wouldn't have wanted me to call another meeting? I think the question is... But you did ask me to call another meeting. When a fellow trustee asked for another meeting, you said no. But when well, somebody else in politics asks you for one, you say, you say well, okay, wait, I'll hold it? And then we'll, you say you're doing me a favor? Well, let me ask, ask you this. If, if, if one person said it, maybe you say, well, no. Maybe if two people ask you, maybe you say, well, maybe. If three people, four people, then maybe you do it. And uh, it was more than one person asking me for another meeting. You okay. happen to be one of them. All right. Now, did, did, did President Robert answer your question about the $12 million that you put here? What do you mean, did he answer my question? Well, you say here $12 well, million dollars more. He told you 6.9 is for preschool only, 4.5 is for salary and benefits, and 1 million is for special ed, 1 million for books. He's accounting for the $12 million you have in here. Does that satisfy you? No. Why not? Because we're still raising taxes when we have double our reserves. We have money in an investment account. And we don't need it there. We only need a portion of it there. We but I'm under the impression that we're not allowed to use those reserves. Why not? 3.2 is the mandatory state reserves. We have 6.5. What? Maybe, Where, where's uh, Alan D'Angelo with the math? I don't know. <laughs> No, he's saying 3.2 is the, the state. Is the state mandatory mandate. reserve? That's 2 percent? Yeah. No, 3.2. Million. 3.2 million is the state mandate. That's what he just said, right? 3.2 so million is the state mandate. you're saying that we a have district to. like Jersey City and, and a 2 district. 2 percent budget is different. It's well, different. you're saying. Our 2 percent represents 3.2 million. Well, that's what I mean. It's not 3.2 million It's 2 percent of the budget, right. So Bayonne is required 3.2. So Bayonne specifically is doubling their requirement for no reason. Okay, according to our last audit, we have 2.1%, and that's just barely above the minimum that we're required. This six million is an aggregate, it's, it's all an aggregate number. It's not carved out in any way. And I guess that's what I was referring to as a slush fund, an aggregate number. The slush fund does have a negative connotation. Well, then I apologize, Carol. I, I can't hear you. I said it had a negative connotation, the word. Well, that was my initial premise. Not, not on Wall Street, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not on Wall Street. You know. oh, Maybe it's Main Street. This is not Wall Street. You know. Does anyone else have I'm any teacher, so comments? Or Mike, you have more? Oh, trustee, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, Mr. Anyone President, else want to add to this that... I mean, the only thing I would love to propose, well, actually I am going to propose it, that we, we have the workshops on a different day than our uh, open meeting, just so we have more time to, to do what we're doing now. I feel like because a lot of times we don't have enough time to do this workshop, you know, 
that we should have the workshops on a different day as a public yeah. meeting. That's just my only proposal. I thought that was the meeting. The, uh, the whole point of having committee meetings, finance, finance meets, personnel meets, building and ground meets, and then the chairperson persons report to the board in his full complement on their findings. And we should have every chairman on this agenda right now at the workshop doing so. Well, and, and I, I have yet to receive any kind of email about anybody else's committees, like the meetings that they go to. Uh, oh, I you send it out every month? An extensive one for me when? last month, and Trustee Cruden is very, 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 very good. In fact, she that. writes she writes I, longer than I speak. I'm going to check because I swear I no, I have not been the chair since you were appointed. Oh. Maria is your chair. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I I no, no, no. She's saying that from the other committees. From other committees, she has. I have no idea. What well, I receive them from uh, Trustee Finity. I know that. You know, well, I, I, know I, I don't receive. But you know what? I, I, how about this? Is a, <laughs> we don't have to discuss this. We don't have to do this right now. But. Instead of committee meetings, instead of committee meetings, why don't we have that day as a workshop day? The days we we have the committee meeting, we'll discuss all committees, and then everyone's on the same page and in the so same. So, so you're suggesting that we change the bylaws and abolish the committee system and just be a committee as the whole? Um, so Absolutely not. Along. I'm trying to go along with what you're hoping. You can't have a hybrid. You have to just have committee meetings. And you got to make time, and you got to have workshops and public meetings, and you just got to make time. That's it. At one time you got to stop combining them all in one day. The reason for the all-day meetings, Mr. President, are not needed anymore, right? Would you say? Well, if you want to have workshops, then we have the meeting after the workshops. I'll no, give that's you an what I'm example. The problem. When I was board president and I was a sitting trustee, <laughs> we had to set up sort of what Mr. Alonzo is talking about. We had a public meeting with a workshop, and then. Prior to that, we had a workshop meeting, but we still had committee meetings. We didn't yeah. abolish oh, yeah. the, committee. Not the committee meeting. I just think it's unfair to the public that in two hours we're going to have our open well, meeting can I make, and that the workshop is right here. I right serve now. at your. Can I, make, can, I, yes. what, can I make a suggestion? Sure. All right. Um, so I do understand what Trustee Alonzo is saying, but you know, um, so Dr. Wanko revamped our. Um, our meeting schedule and it's been working very well up to this point you know but I think that as a board um, first off I'm sad that we're gonna lose Dr. Wanko he's leaving soon and um, we will have a new superintendent starting this summer I think that any type of deviation from the system that we have now should be made a decision should be made in conjunction with the new superintendent coming forward I don't think that this board should at this particular meeting decide we're gonna have this workshop and this meeting and revamp oh, the I schedule. I, I, you know, agree. I don't think we've decided. Right. I, I'm, I'm just, just saying because it's March and everything, and I don't want to all of a sudden in April decide we're going to have four or five different meetings. You know, we have a couple more meetings to get through. Let's revisit this in July 1 or the August meeting when we have the new superintendent in place <laughs> and make a decision from there. Would that be acceptable to everybody? Yes. On, on I days? like that the conversation has started to, to have workshop and our um, meeting on separate days so that we have time to sit and actually talk about all the things that are happening. That's how they used to do it. Right, because right. it's all crammed together very quickly and sometimes we don't get half of what is happening in everything else and we're always asking questions and vote and as we're voting we're like, what happened, what, what was this, what was that? Well, and that's not positive well, for us to what the for committee us to do. Meetings Just are supposed to take care of and then explain to other people. but. If there's been a failure in that, then we have to re look longer, at it again. Longer workshops. Well, no, the committee's supposed to get together, and then they put their resolutions together and present them to the workshop, and then the committee at yeah. the whole decides on those. Right. They're but not. The committee's not supposed to like super super uh, circumvent exactly. or replace so the workshop. The workshop where we come, we actually discuss all the notes that we take at our committee meeting, and we sit and we say, "Well, this happened, that happened. What do you think of this? What do you think of that?" That is more dialogue, more working together. I thought that's what we were currently doing, quite frankly. But the only question. But I our have. workshops are very, our workshops are very short, and this is the most dialogue we've had out here. Actually, uh, people sitting in the audience can tell us this is the most dialogue. Usually, we go down the agenda; it's consent or it's not. Oh, this is for the back, and that's it. We don't discuss like 
that we have targeted supports for and the reports came out that we have um, the grading policy that you questioned that we've, we're adjusting that and making one final uh, presentation so that it's all on one sheet of paper, not on different sheets. Like all this was discussed in curriculum and, it, and it, we're not discussing it. You're supposed to so. send us an email about it though. Exactly on an email, no, but there's no discussion. The so how do I show you exhibit exhibit C on an email, right. and exhibit A and exhibit B that I have here that go along with what um, Ms. Ava um, Trustee Finnerty's email was about? So we have exhibit C, we have exhibit A. You know, it's if we're all here in front, I could show it to her and say that we have the the policy you're asking for. It is here, and it is in here. We're just going to put it together in one place so that when it's looked up, everyone sees it at the same time. You see it all in one place. Well, you really want me to say what I want to say. But <laughs> I happen to think the committee system, the way we're doing it now, I'm works. I'm not suggesting any change in the system, just no, no. the day that we do the workshop. I understand that, That's but what I'm, what I'm saying, and I've lived under all systems, I kind of think the system now with the committees uh, works extremely well. Um, I don't think every single trustee has to get into the minutia of every single resolution if you trust the people you serve with. But my problem still is this. Even if I had two workshops, I had five finance committee meetings. I had four board of education meetings. We had nine meetings in January, February, and March. We still didn't need a gotcha letter to the Community News Jersey Journal if we had nine meetings to discuss what we wanted to discuss. So the excuse of not having meetings to get together to talk, you had nine sessions. Nine sessions where our central office and our trustees were here. Totally That's why I have a problem it's not, with the, It's not an excuse. No not, I'm not saying that that would no, be an no, no, excuse. No, 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 no. I'm not that, talking that about your part that, of this. That part would be better. He's talking about I'm about still the talking oh, okay. about, still unfortunately, my yeah. pet peeve <laughs> with the letter that the chairman of the finance committee wrote because it makes it look like the Board of Ed, once again, doesn't know what we're doing. We're doing things behind the scenes and we're running that off the seat of our pants when we had nine meetings. At any time during those nine meetings, items could have been brought up. Like I said, I have no problem putting a calendar together to go back to the old system. I could do that in a day. What? Dr. Mayer. I said wait. No, we wait. Would it's it be inappropriate for me right now to clap yeah. for you? <laughs> Well, I mean, we had nine How long have you been around? That's, you know, that's not what I'm asking the board to do. That's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking the board to do. I totally Sorry, Dr. Mayer, with all due respect, I guess we have a difference of opinions. Well, my difference of opinion is pretty obvious. You were chairing five meetings. You were really chairing nine no, meetings. No, no, no. Mr. President uh, yeah. Broderick took over three of those budget meetings because I even recommended that the budget not be put on the agenda, and, but, he, but, and he did it. But you never asked any of those questions. <clears throat> Slush funds, kickbacks. I, when, I emailed when, when Mr. A Mr. Member, about it. When a member of this board, any trustee, throws those kind of allegations out there in the public, mm -hmm. it's a disservice, not just for the sitting trustees, but I'm offended by it, and I'm a former trustee. I don't think we should do gotcha moments. We had nine meetings to discuss the budget. And I asked for one more, and I was told no. But I guess if I was the mayor, it would get done. You, you've got this thing on now. I'm saying this all should have been done way before that. Dr. Mayor, you can check your emails. To I emailed county. you. I emailed you, and you said to me, I'm just the board secretary. It's up to Dr. Wonka with his zero-based budgeting. It's not my no. fault we're late. No. You told me that. You said it's Show not up to email. you. Show me that you email. You got it. Okay. Show me that email. Show me that email, because I take my direction from the board president. That's right. Yes. In coordination with the superintendent. Right. I don't take my orders from a trustee. I always go to the president for help. That's right. I understand that. That's not in question. Can I, can I, 
can I ask a question? Sure. Do, what, <coughs> I'm, and forgive me, and I don't mean this. What is the point of this conversation? The only reason I ask is because, like, so not for nothing, <laughs> Trustee Alonzo has written many times many previous <laughs> letters about the board or about what he perceives the board to be, and we've never had this conversation, right? Outside here, you know, I, you know, it, it's never. I, I just I'm trying to understand and follow why this letter in particular is being discussed. Not to mention the fact that he didn't mention that he was a trustee. He said Michael J. Alonzo Bayonne. I understand it's applied that he's a trustee, but we've never had this conversation before and he's filed for you his letters. I mean, I think not for nothing. If we had a problem with him filing letters, we should have had this conversation the first time he did it. And we didn't Trust as a board. Knows. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a, um, is that really a great analogy? Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like maybe a child who's being abused and they get smacked and they get smacked <coughs> and the child gets smacked and smacked again. And finally, it comes to the point that the child is done. Now that I'm just making a metaphor that we as a board is a child. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's but, uh, right. That's that, that, subject verb agreement. Right. Because no, the thing okay. is, is that we have it. gone through this <laughs> once, <laughs> twice, three, four <laughs> times again. Right. And you know what? Oh. It's time we said done. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's, that's fair. Right. I, I, I wanted to if know I, that uh, question. And then the only thing I I'm going to say if from I hearing all this. That also. Uh, okay. The only thing I'm hearing from all, also, President Broderick, you, you may trust the Alonzo, the finance chair. If he asked for another meeting and was not comfortable with the budget, that should have been accommodated, that request. In my personal opinion, only because you have the finance, finance chair, chair saying that he is not comfortable with the budget. Now, if you guys voted, you know, I know how the committee system works. If you guys still voted to bring it forward, that's fine. But, I mean, that should have been remedied at one point in time, in my personal opinion, only because as finance chair, he has a right to call for another meeting. That's all I'm, I'm, I'm Well, we say. had a meeting on Monday of uh, that Thursday's, and he wanted another meeting bef before that, and I just didn't see where anything was going to... Uh, the only ones there, myself, Trusty Ryan, and, and I, I, I wouldn't have thought any was going to happen at that point, and I thought we should just bring it to the board at that point. It isn't like we were making a decision. We just making a decision, bring it to the board. I understand. Correct. I'm saying. So I, I mean, agree. I have to say I agree with uh, Trustee Munoz on that. If we trusted, if you trusted um, Alon, uh, Trustee Alonzo enough to be that finance chair, and he requests another meeting, it should be granted. Just like if. Uh, Trustee Finnerty or myself request an extra meeting for something in our committees because we're seeing something that that's bothering us. It should be granted because we were trusted to be those committee chairs. That that's that, my opinion on that. All right. But it, going back to the other statement that you made, that um, far as you made a statement that Trustee Alonzo <laughs> made other allegations. Oh, most of them go, go. Most of them come to me, actually. Most of them. About, I don't know why. Right, well, I mean, but anyway, I, I just want. Yeah, we've always discussed them, and as of late, it was like, actually, the last week, I spoke to. I was speaking to Trustee Alonzo, and he said that he was told he has to do it now in public. So that's why we're doing it in public. I told you that Mitchell Pasquale told me all budget questions, comments should be done in public, especially if they don't pertain to personnel. Well, that's why I was, that's why we're doing this here as opposed to... But my letter is not a budget issue, so it doesn't make sense to me. The letter's about the budget. Yeah, the budget has to be in public, not things about the budget. So, I My only problem... That is okay, this is fine, let's keep going. Is, unfortunately, unfortunately, or fortuitously, however you want to look at it, your letter personally offended me as a trustee with the inference that we have a slush fund, with the inference that perhaps members of this board are using funds for our own personal. That's what the inference was. That's the way I read it as a Bayon reader. And I was personally offended offended by that, and, uh, and and the last board meeting, when we sat in that back room, 
in the executive session, keep on shaking your head no. When we sat in that back room, nothing mm -hmm. was said to any one of us trustees that how you really felt. And then I read it in the newspaper, and I was like, holy cow. You are characterizing this board as if we're on this for personal gain. I'm not getting a slush fund. And if, please tell me, shove some my way, because I could really use it. I am, I am so totally offended, and I feel so disrespected and unappreciated for the time, the effort that has gone into this. We were all in this, I think, all of us. I'm, I'm quite sure we all are, as well as you, for the benefit of the students, the teachers, and the taxpayers of this city to suggest that there's a slush fund or where misusing funds is an insult to me. And I'm offended. Well, let me just tell you, when I asked for another finance meeting, I was offended too when they told me no. Okay, I think we're... <coughs> Good, so at this time we'll adjourn to a closed session for the legal personnel negotiation items.